Aleluia, Senhor. Salmo 23, verse 4, is here in the projection, the ones who want to follow. Amen. You're going to read also verse 6 afterwards. It says the following, the word of the Lord. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The church may be seated. May the Lord bless us through His Word. My brother, before we begin the message, we're going to relay here a spiritual gift the Lord has shared, uh, given us. God was showing that it was with us a uh, young lady, and she was, uh, was walking on a track, doing a walk, like it was a, a Grand Canyon, a place surrounded by mountains, a rocky place, like it was a track without a lot of uh, ability to see things where she was. And when she saw herself in that condition, she kind of began to desp get desperate. She was not able to get out of that place, uh, that situation in which she was. She tried to scream and ask for help. And the feeling that she had in her heart was that she was not going to be able to get out of the place. It was a valley, a very far away place. And the Lord was showing to her that through the period of praise, the Lord began to operate it on the heart of this you. When the song uh, that we sang, you have nothing to fear. And she began to understand one thing. I am in this place, but I'm not alone. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Lord is saying that he can take her out of this situation. She understood this, and the Lord made himself available to her to bless her tonight. And the experience, my brethren, that we see here in this passage is the experience, not only the experience that this youth is going through, but it's also the experience of the one who has known the Lord one day experience of the one who comes be, gets to know and have an experience with the Lord the, the theme here of the text that we just read this word I said that David expresses here he speaks about the situation in which he was living and the focus there of the word that he was having that he understood was the following I shall not fear anything and that's the expression of the church at this last hour one who has understood that he's an experience with the Lord that has gave himself to this promise he said I shall not fear I'll trust you. and that's what David wanted to say there because David before he placed himself in this condition in which he placed himself on those Psalms on this Psalm before placing himself in this condition it was something that he had already experienced because he had already been a shepherd. He knew what it was to be a shepherd. He knew what it was, what this role meant, what is the position of the sheep, and what was the role of the shepherd. He knew. Uh, it's clear because when he, at one moment he went out to fight on a war, he was called and the experience that he had was like this, like a shepherd of sheep. Because we, Lord, my, my brethren, when we are called by the Lord, he's called and he's forged by experience with the Lord, what side that the Lord operates in the life of man. And David declares, I was there as a shepherd, I took care of the sheep of my father. Then came then a lion, to attack the sheep and I was victorious then a bear came and I was victorious it was the he's declaring 
declaration as a shepherd. So he knew to what he was being called for. So when he was chosen there in the house of Jesse, he was uh, a father of, two, two, uh, of eight children. And Samuel goes to the house of Jesse through the revelation of the Lord so that David could be anointed. So the, and actually, so that the king could be anointed over Israel. It was a period in which Saul go governed, was a governance according to the heart of man. We need to understand this because the call for the life of David was a different call. God has made us like this. We have a different call. And when Samuel went to the house of Jesse, all the children uh, passed by in front of the prophet. And at a certain point, the prophet says, says, now I'm before the one who's going to reign over Israel because they were, they were strong and beautiful children, but the Lord has rejected everyone. But when the prophet asked Jesse, is, isn't there anyone else, any other child? Because we have here, the ones who are here, the Lord has rejected. They are not the ones. So then Jesse says the following, oh, there's another one, the youngest one. He's a young man. He's a simple one. But he is in the field. He's taking care of the sheep. That was the experience of David as a shepherd. So then the prophet said, We are not going to sit at the table until this child is with us. So then, my friend, this is the experience of the one who is called for this work. You entered here tonight. You may be going through a difficulty that I may not know. May, no one of us may not know but I want to tell you something the Lord knows your heart the Lord has remembered your difficulty the Lord is placing himself in the condition to bless you especially the prophet that was the fallen we're not going to sit at the table until he's, he is not here and when he came here the Lord told the prophet this is the one that I have chosen to reign over Israel this is our call for this at this moment. It was not a call that came from man, but it was a call that came to the Holy Spirit of the Lord. And the one who is the shepherd of our lives, he came to govern uh, of our lives. It's a call, there's a call of having, of, of being a volunteer in the kingdom of God. And we are all here it's because one day God was pleased, was chosen to, to have us working in His kingdom. The sheep is an illustration that is an illustration of uh, an innocent, fragile animal, and that's why we have our shepherd. We have Jesus, because He is the door for the sheep. We have the one that called Himself the shepherd of our lives, and that's why David now. In the psalm, he introduces himself. He now no longer introduces himself as a shepherd, but he introduces himself as a sheep. He presents himself as a sheep because he knew that he was reigning over Israel. He knew that he was a, a, a kingdom of blood and war. David had problems with wars. Had problems with his armies. Had problems inside of his own house. He had problems with his family members. He had problems with himself, with himself, with his own feelings. And that's the condition of the one who served the Lord. We are here because we know of one thing: we are dependent on the mercy of the Lord. All the trials are in our lives, are our lives every day. The afflictions. They come every day. It is interest, interesting that this expression, do not be, fear. I was researching, according to the historians, I didn't say, but it appears in the Bible 366 times in the Bible. Today has pointed us to this message. And this is the experience that the church lives with the Lord. We know that the trials are going to come. But the expression of David was the following. Even if I walk on the valley of shadow death. What is a valley? 
valley is a place where you go through a lower place surrounded by mountains. So in other words, in a situation of war, you are uh, susceptible to be attacked and be hit. But the expression of David was the following, even if I walked to the valley of shadow of death. My brother, even if you are yeah, going through a trial and go going through difficulty, you know that you have a shepherd that governs over your life. You have a Lord that called us for this kingdom. You have a Lord. We have also an assurance. Was this the certainty of David? This is a ministry in my life. This kingdom is not going to end. That's why the Lord himself said in David, about David. I found David as a man according to my own heart. It was a kingdom that was established by God. And the promise of God was the following. David will never lack someone that will be sitting on the throne. My brother, the Lord is calling us because he knows of one thing. He also gave us the means to work on the, on the battle. He gave, made himself available to the Lord. He, when he went to the war, he consulted the Lord. And this is our condition. The will of the Lord is to be above of our own will. When we give ourselves to the Lord, it needs to be like what David did. Even He said, even if I walked through the valley of shadow of death, doesn't matter the difficulty, he says, I shall not fear any evil, because you are with me. He says, your rod and your staff comfort me. What is What was the rod? The rod it was an instrument used by the shepherd for the protection. If a lion came, or a bear, or any predator, a shepherd would use this rod for the protection of the sheep. The staff was a different instrument, was a curved, and the, the shepherd used to direct the sheep. For if the sheep wanted to go astray from the path, or, or get lost, or wanted to forsake the, the flock, abandon the flock, he would go with all love and attention. He would redirect that sheep to be in the path where they would have a, a destination. And this is the condition for the Lord to us. The Lord every day brings us protection. Is the Holy Spirit of the Lord that guide our lives. It's the correction of the Lord. Sometimes the Lord speaks to us what we need to hear and not what we want to hear. But it is for us the direction so that we may be continuing this walk. The Lord has shown a man tonight that entered here in this condition. Uh, with a hardened heart like uh, a dry land, resistant, resistant to what God is telling him, what God is showing, what God wants to do in his life. But the Lord was showing that on the service tonight fell upon the church a very strong wane. And the rain fell especially on the life of this man. The Lord has shown that the heart of this man that was earlier was hardened, but the, his heart was soaked with this water. And we saw that there was a seed there. The seed was sprouted, and from that seed came out a red rose. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, the seed is the word of God. The seed has been born in our heart through the action of the Holy Spirit of the Lord. And the red rose is Jesus revealed in the life of man. Because he went to the cross for this. He came to the, went to the cross to shed his blood. So that through his blood, man may be able to reach eternal life. And that through his blood, you may be able to have the right of being a sheep in God's pasture. And David understood this. He said, Lord, I may be going through the valley of shadow of death. I may be in any difficulty that I may have. But I should not be afraid. I will trust in you. Because David knew that until that moment there, he was able to trust in the Lord. He knew that at that moment ahead, he was going to be able to continue trusting in the Lord. And what gives us strength in this walk is to know this. Because if the Lord has helped us to this day, He will sustain us to the end. He will sustain us. And the final expression here, that ended last verse here, 
the final expression of David was the following. Because, Lord, I will inhabit in the house of the Lord for long days. This expression was a prophetic expression. But this is the expression of the church. Lord, I will inhabit in the house of the Lord for long days. What is long days? It's an eternity beside the Lord. It's an eternal life with the Lord. And until we get there, the Lord will sustain us all the way to the end. My brethren, we may leave this place with this assurance. The valley of shadow of death, we're going through it every day. The return of Jesus is coming here. And we know that the closer it gets, the trials, the opposition, they come. The Bible says that there was going to come a time that we're going to worship the Lord and in spirit and in truth. And it has happened. The war, this last hour, is in the mind of man. It's, it comes to confuse. The position comes to take us out of the presence of the Lord and to allow us to force us to stay in the valley of shadow of death. But the church is not going to remain in the valley of shadow of death. It's going to go through it, but we'll be victorious because the church will get into it in the eternity and it's going to get there glorified because the no, church knows that he's a shepherd. The world has no governance. Man, he, according to his own reason, has lost the notion of his origin, where he came and where he's going to. But the faithful church, the Holy Spirit has directed, has caused us to understand the moment is of trial, the moment of the battle, but the Lord is with us. Amen. Let's continue. Uh, so we're going to sing now a song.
Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bless be your name, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God. I invite the church to stand up at this moment. The church will be glorifying the Lord. We will find the name of the one who has called us to this work. We will find the name who's of the one who is our shepherd. One or two have a word of glorification to the name of the Lord. Let's be your name, Lord. Let's be your name. To my servant. Praise the name of the one who is your shepherd, because I tell you that my presence he is with you in this place. Said that my spirit has renewed many hearts a desire to serve me, a desire to proceed in this walk, and I leave to you, my children, tonight. I leave a word: Do not fear the world. And my son went to the cross of Calvary. He gave himself in order to declare your victory. Rest on this word. Because I tell you, I will sustain you all the way to the end. Hallelujah, Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we want to glorify at this moment, glorify your name. Praise the Lord, because it was pleasing to you to send your son to the cross of Calvary so that he could become our shepherd, so that he could shed his blood, so that this right was would be given to us. That's why we glorify the Lord. We praise you because you have an assurance that the Lord has been with us every day. Praise your name. We offer you thanks in our service and our adoration in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. If you know the brethren, you who visit us, desire to receive a prayer, we'll be here at your disposal. You can remain where you are. We're going to go to you and we're going to be praying for your life. The pastor has a word for the church. Peace of the Lord, my brother. Tomorrow we're going to have our Sunday school at 10.30 in the morning. At night, we're going, not going to have service in presence here in the church. At 5 of the afternoon, the church in Pompano, we're going to meet with the church of Hollandale, there in Hollandale, where we will participate on a mini seminar. There are going to be two classes with a break for coffee. And after the two classes in the seminar, we're going to have the service in presence in Hollandale with the two churches. So if the brethren should organize themselves, because we're going to start at five and we're going to end until nine. After nine. If you don't have the, the address of Hollandale, the brethren from the group of assistants are going to be placed in there, the direction. You just need to click, and the app is going to take you there. So let's organize ourselves for this. If you have invited someone to participate on the service tomorrow in Pompano, invite this person to go to Hollandale instead. They can participate on the seminar. Any person can participate on this mini seminar can invite, we can take the person, and let's organize ourselves for this. So tomorrow night, we're not going to have a service in presence, and after the five of the afternoon, we're going to begin a mini seminar, and after the service of glorification, all in the Church of Hallandale, yeah, tomorrow night. So I wish everyone the peace of the Lord.